Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number six. It adds up after a while, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and we got lots of cool stuff to talk about this week, uh, like new the, noise reduction yeah, stuff. Yeah, Bruce Free noise reduction, um, punch and roll and twisted wave. Say it isn't so. It's we'll true. Punch. A little demonstration for you guys. Uh, talking about Zoom and how cool it is for doing uh, coaching and support, ceiling clouds, and a cool little mixer called the Roadcaster you might be interested in, as well as project management tools from samepage.io and your questions. We got some great questions today. So stay tuned. VoiceOver Body Shop, Tech Talk number six, coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And it's now time. For Tech Talk, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BDS. But lots of BS to talk about tonight because we got tons of tech. This is the part where I get to shine. Right. And if you, <laughs> and, uh, I don't have to make up that I have an actual vested interest in what the guest is talking about. Good point. This is now in my bailiwick. Absolutely. And again, if, if you've got, if you're watching this live, uh, make sure that you uh, ask any questions you might have, throw them in the chat room, and we will answer those questions a little bit later on in the show. Mm -hmm. But let's go to our tech update. There is a pile of stuff here on the platter of tech knowledge. There is, there is. So I have been uh, gathering news stories and just life experiences, you know, as, okay. as we go along and finding lots of interesting things. Um, the first thing I got on the, on the list tonight is maybe we'll just do this a little bit out of order. Because first I want okay. to show you Twisted Throw Wave. Throw me totally off. Because I think Twisted Wave is really the... I think that's the one. Because I want to show you Twisted Wave and I want to show you a plug-in. So we're going to do that all on DAW view here in just a minute. But uh, Twisted Wave has finally joined or is in the process of joining the world of software that has punch and roll. Or roll and punch. Or roll and punch. Why they call it punch or and roll. Auto or auto punch or yeah, punch in. Punch in. One of the many healthy. ways of describing right. what this thing is. Um, you know, we've been using workarounds for Twisted Waves' lack of this feature for a really long time. Um, as of the time you guys see this show, it may be available in out in the wild. It's still um, in beta testing phase. I got a beta version um, directly from the developer, Thomas, and he sent us a link. So I actually have it installed. And the beauty of it is it, well, it just looks like Twisted Wave. Um, is that working tonight, Sue? Can you show us the Twisted Wave window? Yes, Bing! And there right it is. There. So, yeah, it's well, it's just Twisted Wave. They just he added a few features. And I just thought it was funny it took them so long to do it. But you know what? Thomas has got 
a queue of features. So he, he finally decided this was the one that needed to be up next. So the way it works is, well, it's just in Twisted Wave. Um, if I go into my preferences, um, there's a new preference under editing called pre-roll. Oh. So you can set this pre-roll exactly how long you want it. Right. Some software, it's basically one, two, or three seconds. Some use, uh, like Reaper, use bars. So it's one, two, three, or four beats in a bar because it's for music. Here you can, if you want 2.5 seconds, well, type in 2.5 seconds pre-roll. Um, then you can basically choose a punch in point and that's where it's going to record from. So um, the key here, I think, is the key is using keys, I'm not trying to use the keyboard. I'm trying to use your mouse. You want to have a keyboard shortcut set up. And the one that it comes with out of the box is going to be, um, it's under audio. And it's uh, normally command R is record and then shift command R is punch in. I've made it P. So if you want to find a punch in point, here's what I have recorded. Let me see if I have it potted up here. Hey now, one, two, three, four, five, punch in test. So uh, right when I say punch in test, I'm going to replace that. So that's my punch in point, And I'm just going to hit P. Hey now, one, two, three, four, five, punch, punch in, in test. Point. Oh, <laughs> We did not rehearse that. Hey yeah. now, one, two, three, four, five. Punch, punch in, in test. point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a bad punch. Well, you can see. I mean, well, we can do it again. Drop dead simple. Let's do that one again. Let's this time. Dan will uh, do the punch in. Okay. Hey now, one, two, three, four, five. Punch in point. There you go. Hey now, one, two, three, four, five. Punch in point. So Bingo. it's the beauty of it is the is the sheer simplicity of it. Um, you know, Twisted Wave is not a multi-track doll. Right. You're not going to be able to take the punch in point and change the crossfade and do lots of fooling around. This is pretty straightforward stuff. But for most of voice actors, that's what they need. Right. They need something easy to use. And it does crossfade the punch punch point. So you're not going to have like a click right. when the punch point That's happens. one of the great things about Twisted Wave is it has that, that crossover point. And it's easy to edit. If you need to go back and edit, you can't. Yeah. It's easy to, to find that spot and, and make sure it's nice and smooth. Uh, but this is a huge jump forward for Twisted Wave. Uh, a lot of people have been waiting for this. When I posted that this was coming on the Twisted Wave group on Facebook, I got a ton of excited people. So a lot of folks have been using Ocean Audio or some other tool as just that punch-in function. How many voice actors are using punch-in? I wonder. If you, if you guys are punch-in users, comment down below in the, in the YouTube chat or in the comments or something. Let us know how many of you are... Big time into punch and recording. I mean, mainly it's voice, uh, uh, audiobook. Audiobook stuff. Because right. it's or very long. long. narration but of some sort, yeah. Maybe some of you other, uh, some of you have found some clever ways of using punch in. I don't know. While I'm in Twisted Wave, now I can show you um, a noise reduction plugin I stumbled on. Um, there's a lot of them. Of course, we always talk about Isotope and some of the others. This one is a little bit different. Um, first of all, it's really affordable, which is really refreshing. It's, um, it's called Bruce Free, which I believe is Swedish for noise free. Um, and the whole idea here is that, um, well, it's nice because this is a standalone plugin that does just one job. You don't have to buy a suite of plugins. You can just buy Bruce Free, install it, and away you go. And let me show you what it looks like. So I'll go back over here to Twisted Wave. You don't have to pronounce it right. No, you don't. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on what your Swedish is. I've guess. already installed it. Now, it's a plugin, so it's not an application. This is a plugin. So once you install it, you run the installer, you're going to have to restart your software to get it to load. Um, if I go into Effects, Audio Units, it's going to show up under Clevgrand. That's the maker. And it's Bruce Free. <laughs> and let me see if I can bring it into the window where you can see it. There we go. Um, it's, of course, mine's running in trial mode right now because I just installed it a second ago. Um, but the way it works is you simply, and this may not be unusual to a lot of you that have used, say, Audacity. You select your noise profile, which is the room tone. You click the ear for learn while it's playing. This is what's a little bit weird. You click play. You can loop it if you want and then hold down learn. Now it's listening to that room tone. Now it's created a profile of that room tone and it's ready to go. So you can apply this now to the whole recording. Mm -hmm. And its built-in algorithm is pretty darn good. I've played with it on a few things. I haven't had to mess around, but you can get in there under the hood and play with some of these other things, what they, what they call edge, mm -hmm. um, high-pass filter, um, the high-end, and the blend of the 
unprocessed to the process. You can get in there and change a lot, but generally I've found that you don't have to. It 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 just kind of does a nice job on its own. And it's a nice noise. It's basically an extremely complicated noise gate. Ah. It's not mathematically, algorithmically trying to subtract the noise. As you guys know, if you do too much of that, it sounds mm. funky. Right. It, it takes sounds, it, it leaves digital uh, yeah. res, re, remnants and stuff. Resin. Like <laughs> yeah, resin. Digi- yeah, digital resin. <laughs> yeah, at least junk. Be- it found, sounds funky. Um, and this one I found minimally sounds funky, only if you do it really heavy-handed. But, right. And it doesn't take away all the noise either. So it doesn't sound weird. It's not like a gate that completely removes all noise. That's not good either. Right. It still leaves a residual amount of noise that so sounds it's, natural. It's a slightly more precise noise gating. Yeah. Type it's of basically program. like apparently from the way you describe it, a whole bunch of gates, all very precisely set up. So Get it's now. pretty clever. It's I think it's about sixty US. Um and they have an iOS version for fifteen bucks, which you can run on iPhone and iPad. So that could be a game changer for people just having to bang out an audition and can't get a clean enough recording in their hotel room. So Cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right. What else we got? What else we got? We'll fly through the rest of these. But um, another thing I'm excited about is Zoom again. We we, we, we love use, Zoom. We love Zoom. Dan uses it. We use it for meetings. It's Zoom is no longer a secret. When we first started using it three or four years ago, it was definitely new to the kid on the block. Now I get off the airplane in Denver, and there's a huge banner saying <laughs> Zoom. Zoom conferencing. We it's, were it's, early adopters. It's huge. Um so what they've added is um, a couple things that help for people that do what I do and Dan does, and that's support. So not only can we share your screen and see what you're showing us, but we can now take over the mouse. So if we're trying to actually, well, no, it's here, and let me show you the setting you need to change. We can demonstrate it for you live on your computer. Wow. that That's, you know, and for like you said, for what we do, when we're talking to people about, you know, about getting their stuff set up properly, Yeah, you can't beat that. It's hugely useful. I mean, we've, found multiple tools for doing this remote thing it's not new but the fact that it's built into a platform that you guys probably almost all have used at some point taking a webinar or you know doing a meeting it's built in so that's cool it also has a waiting room so now i can send out one uh link to everybody from my appointment everybody has the same link but if they call in early or if i'm running late they're just sitting in a waiting room and it tells them that you're on hold and then when I'm ready for my session, I just admit, and they're in. And I can even type to them when they're waiting. Like, sorry, I'm just a minute behind. Or, it or doesn't make inter- it the receptionist is talking to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Dolores, is, the, yes. the, the receptionist, yeah. is, he'll be with you momentarily. Yes. No, it's, it's <laughs> very, I mean, how would this apply to voice actors? I don't know. But I think a tool like this could end up being really cool for people that take a lot of direction. You know, yeah. It would be really sweet. You know, Absolutely. As a phone patch replacement. So yeah. that's, I'm really psyched about that. Um, moving down the list. Now, here's something ceiling clouds. Mm-hmm. This was so funny because my lovely assistant, Rebel, has been working with me for well over 10 years. We were talking about cloud, and she assumed we were talking about uh, the, the internet cloud. cloud right. Right. And it uh, turned out we were actually talking about ceiling cloud, acoustic cloud. Now, Dan's studio here. Highly equipped with clouds. So what are clouds? These are panels that su- suspend from the ceiling. Usually they are not flush against the ceiling, but suspended from it down a bit. But I just got to put one up in um, Scott Rommel's studio in his booth. Um, we custom built it. It was a big project because it's almost as big as the whole ceiling. Um, how big is the room? It's not huge. It's just it's awkward getting something into a room that's the same size as the room. Oh yeah, you got to like slide it through the door and yeah, yeah need okay. to take everything out of the room to get it in there. But right. Scott's been happily recording in the space for a long time, but we put that in there and he just just he was immediately noticed the difference in terms of the way it focuses the sound. But it also allows you to work the mic further away, which I think is really nice. That's one thing we get to do here. Our mic, I mean my mic is Oh man, it's almost two feet, eight, 20 inches away from it's me right now. It's a cubit away. Yeah, it's a cubit, <laughs> an arm's length to my knuckle. <laughs> it's pretty far and it still sounds pretty present and focused. Um, and the, the problem is most people can't do that in their booths. They, so if you can get a cloud, which is really a very large bass trap that's suspended above you off the ceiling, if you have the clearance for it, it's amazing the improvement it can make. And it, instead of having to be this far away from the mic or even this far away from the mic now you can be this far or this far or even this far 
and still get a focused sound. Right. That's what I found. Yeah, and the reason that I, I installed these, you know, aside from being able to record in here and do our show in here and make sure that everything is, is you know, sounding a lot like the room is not that reflective anymore, it was important for playback on studio monitors. Yeah. Uh, very, very important that when you are listening to playback on studio monitors, that you're not playing back into a reflective surface because it will come back behind you and you might be hearing what sounds like an echo that doesn't really exist within your recording. Exactly. So, uh, you know, this place was really designed for the playback, uh, you know, and if you're mixing something, you know, certainly guys who are mixing music or spots or something like yeah. that, it's really essential. I was talking to somebody today and they're like, well, how do I treat the ceiling? Well, it's a big mm -hmm. room, very similar to this one. Build some clouds. They're not hard to build yourself. I mean, something simple. I mean, these are made out of two by twos. Yeah, and, if you keep uh, it simple, don't try to make one that's the size of your entire floor plan of your room. Right. Just, You're going to you need know, a make, crane to get it up there. It can be a couple smaller sections that you hang separately. Right. You know, but you know, you 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 make a frame. You put a, f a fabric of whatever color you want. Mm -hmm. Staple it in. Put Roxel or Oralex or what other other types of insulation. And then what I did is I covered up the back with. Uh, with a weed blanket. Oh, really? You know, something, a weed preventer, those those things. Oh, yeah, yeah, Just yeah. staple it in, and it holds it in. It keeps it separate, you know, the rock sole from everything. This is California, Dan, so weed blanket can mean just about anything. Not probably what That's I was... That's not what I was thinking when you first said Okay, that. weed preventative, <laughs> you know, material. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's it's a brilliant way to do it. Just just be careful. if you Remember, your, your acoustic material is now suspended, and it's hanging down against the front of it so it can sometimes pillow and get slack so a little bit it use, doesn't affect the sound yeah too much, use but. stuff that uh does isn't too floppy so right. it's a little bit more stiff inside right um man what else what i got let's do one more and then uh, we can move on and get to the questions and okay. other, other stuff but um do any of you guys do project management like it was <laughs> beyond just <laughs> Email getting hired thread. for a video, but like, <laughs> are you tired of email threads that get broken? Someone didn't get CC'd. They're like, what, wait, what happened? And then, oh, he forgot to reply to all, you know, all right. that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a productivity junkie and I, I've been looking for something that's better. Um, cause when I do studio designs, there's sometimes five, eight people involved. You're working with contractors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sometimes. So. And I've been trying to find something. Well, I did stumble on one. It's called, um, samepage.io. So it's basically, it's free for many people's use. It's, you know, it, for more complex stuff, it costs, I think, $7 a month. It's not expensive. But the thing I liked about it is the learning curve. It is really easy to learn how to use. It was not intimidating, and I got it up and running like a day or two, and I'm already managing a couple studio build projects on it. And so if, if you're having to do some bigger projects, something that requires multiple people, maybe even producing an audio book, that could be a good, this could be a good way to, have you, the author, and other people involved, editors, all on the same page Good on luck. this thing? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it's it has file exchanging. You can, you can d exchange files. You can do all sorts of things in this environment. It's kind of like Google Docs reimagined with better integration of all of them together. Designed more specifically for a workflow yeah. that you can probably customize. You can have milestones, you know, right. due dates, tasks. This is almost done. That kind of thing. So might be useful to you guys interesting interesting well if you haven't noticed uh george and i spend most of our time thinking about home studios you know somebody's got to do it and the fact is is there are not a lot of people out there that really understand the uniqueness of a home voiceover studio remember these things didn't exist 20 years ago i mean there were a few guys there they were probably using reel-to-reel -reel machines and uh or adats mm -hmm. uh and they were disc jockeys and they'd go home and they'd have their studio at home and stuff voiceover today is predicated on the fact that we can record ourselves and you've got to have the right environment yeah. and the skills to be able to record at home and it's, it's got to not sound like it's recorded at home that's too. right and you know and that's a problem because yeah. there are lawn mowers and leaf blowers and jets and helicopters and all sorts of things yep. uh and uh so you need help you need to learn how to do it and if you don't necessarily want to learn it so much or how to do how to create your studio there's only two places you can go you can go to george you can go to me 
and we all know the same stuff. So it's up to you to decide, not that it's a, a voting contest. Or Put your fingers to the walk and check out our websites. I'm over at georgethetech.com. You can see the offerings I have there. I've got a drop-down menu with different services. Some of it's booked by the time and some of it's by the service, depending on what it is that you want to do. And if you don't know what you need to do, you can ask or just start off with booking a half-hour phone consult and we'll cover a tremendous amount of ground in a half hour. But Dan is available at his place and that's over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah. That's right. I'm a full-time voice actor. But I also mm -hmm. work with people in their home studios. I understand what you're going through and what it is you mm. need to know to work with your workflow. And perhaps you're starting from zero. You really, you've never really recorded on your own before. Maybe you did on a cassette recorder mm -hmm. you know, 30 years ago. It's, it's essentially the same thing, just a little bit more sophisticated. I can teach you from soup to nuts how to get it sounding the way it's supposed to sound. And... Uh, all you got to do is go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, contact me. Be happy to talk to you. We can set up a consult. Also, I have my uh, <laughs> my specimen collection cup where you can submit your audio. Let's see what your stu you know, the studio you've built. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's see if we can get it sounding the way it's supposed to sound. Anyway, we've got lots of questions from you guys. So we'll be right back after these messages and give you our take on those questions. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful longtime sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, Visden, all kinds of interesting products. Visden, something I haven't talked about for a little while, so why not tonight? Visden is virtual ISDN. So what the heck is that? Is that a bridge? Not really, no. Visden is, you got your ISDN codec box. By the way, these things are dirt cheap right now on eBay. $200, maybe. You still want to use that thing and plug it into your have ISDN lines, but you can't get them. The phone company won't offer them, or they're gouging you on prices. You can get a Visden service from Source Elements, and this is going to allow you to make use of your ISDN equipment, still receive and make ISDN calls like always. It's an end argument-ending technology that all of the studios that still use ISDN, and yes, trailer houses, and there's a lot of companies that do, will allow you to make connections, and it works and sounds exactly like ISDN. It's a fantastic system. If you want to give it a try, you should give them a call or, or check in over at source-elements.com. And while you're there, definitely, if you don't have it already, get a Source Connect demo, a 15-day free trial of Source Connect, their flagship software that every voice actor should probably have these days if you're actually getting hired for voiceover work. So thanks again for Source Elements, and we'll be right back here with our Tech Talk segment. we got a lot to talk about, so... We'll be right back. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. The Sentrance Mixer Face saved a session for Harlan Hogan last week. Now, who is on a little, okay, nine days in the Bahamas spring break sailing trip? And one of his very good political clients had five TV commercials to record for a focus group. Now, it was a new client for them, and the client insisted that they be conferenced in on a phone patch, remember those, to help direct the client generally lets him do this kind of work undirected. Well, with the Mixerface second input channel, Harlan brought the Skype audio into his headphones and the phone patch worked perfectly and so simply by design. The second channel audio is not recorded. How about that? That's quite an accomplishment for a unit that was really built with us voice actors in mind by Sentrance. 
And one of the best places to get one of these is at voiceoveressentials.com, where you can get almost anything made for us voice actors with quick shipping and Harlan's legendary customer service. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Go there right after watching this. Thanks, Harlan. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we are back. We are. Tech Talk here on Voice Over Body Shop. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to get your questions. Again, throw them in the chat room. If you've got a home voiceover studio question, you've come to the right place because we're the guys that know the answers. I mean, you can go to forums. People yeah. throw questions out to forums. I saw some really outrageous answers. That somebody suggested, I won't mention any names because he probably doesn't watch our show. Uh, somebody was like, can Twisted Wave be a, a multi-track recorder? Mm -hmm. And this person piped in, oh, I've been using Audition 1.5 for the past 20 years, and it still works great on my computer, which is probably a Radio Shack TRS-80. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, that's just... Silly. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people drive a 25-year-old car out of a point of pride, I guess. I mean, you know, if, if if you got what you got and it works and gets you there, go, you know, more power to you. But once that card breaks, you're going to be the one fixing it. And that's how it is using old yeah. software. Right. There's no support. So Absolutely. Yeah, I, no support for 1.5. Support online, you know, we call it tech support by committee, is a real crapshoot. Yeah. And Don't you can get the right answer, but... Crowdsourcing your studio <laughs> often doesn't work out that great. I mean, uh, that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, I was just took a little detour today so I could okay. go to my mailbox in Santa Monica and pick up the thing that been trying to get to my house for quite a while now. It was shipped mm -hmm. to my house when I was out of town. Signature required. Needless to say, it went back and I had to get it again. But this is the um, this is going to be something that's going to get a full review at the Pro Audio Suite, the podcast I'm on. But I wanted to show at least a few little teasers, and that is the Procaster, or actually the Roadcaster Pro, I mean to say. Get it out of the lights there. Yeah, it's very hard to go. get the glare out there, of it. Right there. The Roadcaster <laughs> Pro is going to be a, a interesting device. So what the, what's the deal with this thing? It's a podcasting device, essentially. It, it is. I mean, it's, it's, it has the potential of being a really cool voiceover tool, but it's kind of more than what you need in a lot of ways because it's multi-track i mean it's multi-mic i should say not multi-track right multi-track is going to come by the way it's not multi-track yet um but it has four mic inputs so um this is really for someone that's doing more podcasting or webcasting than anything else well you've got several sources and you want to you need them to do them in real time yeah and it, it really works like a like a radio console um but it's got a few extra tricks up its sleeves like you have programmable uh, on this side, you have programmable uh, sound bites you can load in. Cart you know, machine. Like a cart <laughs> machine. Um, maybe you put in one of these as like a, a beep, like a tone. Right. Uh, maybe one of these is like your slate recorded mm -hmm. in somebody else's voice. Damn I hear that a, a slate recorded in a female <laughs> voice for male talent can sometimes be effective. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you could do with those. But anyway, this is the Procaster. I think one of the, I keep calling it the Procaster. It's they the have a mic called it. This is the Roadcaster Pro. Um, I think one thing that's clever is the user manual. I'm holding it. The user manual is three cards. They're a cue card size. This one basically has almost nothing on it. Basically, it's telling you to go download the drivers. Driver, you know, and then plug it into your, your computer. computer. That's the whole picture. That's I... the second page of the manual. <laughs> then we have uh, this page of the manual, which is everything that's on the front panel. And this is all in multiple languages. So when you see a lot of options here. It's because it's in a lot of languages. Um, so one shows the front panel and what it does. This side shows the rear panel and what it does. That's all it has on it. And then this one is the basics of how to plug everything in and what it does manual. So this is page one and page two. Wow. Eight steps. Um, it's as close to like IKEA assembly instructions for a mixer that I've ever seen. So clearly this thing was designed to be a targeting talent and hosts and podcasters, not technical people. And we're going to try it out and see, is this thing going to be a boon for voiceover or just another gadget with features you don't need? 
Right. You know, so we're yeah. going to find out. Yeah, I mean, we're, we both, you know, we're both into podcasting and listening to podcasts. Sure. Uh, I mean, you listen to, because you're in the car a lot. And yeah. uh, you listen to a lot of podcasts. Podcasting, I think what a lot of people don't get about podcasting is that it's essentially radio production. Uh, and if you've never done it, it's a total mystery to you. But something like this really is recreating essentially a broadcast board with pre-programmed sounds in it, different mics uh, mm -hmm. that you can then mix in real time. So if you go to a break, you've got your jingle and you press the green button. You right. do that. You know, it, used, it was a little more difficult in the old analog days, but now this is doing it completely digital. Yeah. And, and it creates podcasting, which is essentially those programs that you would hear at six o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. <laughs> right, exactly. And another thing is like this is, you know, the idea here with a with a with a product like this is, you know, if you have your standard Mackie mixer type of thing, it's got a hundred knobs on it. Mm -hmm. This thing hides all those fun functions. So the stuff you need to at your fingertips is there and everything else is not. Right. So when you're doing a, something live, if you have to think about too many steps, chances are you kinda 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 screw it up. And I do it almost every week. I've already screwed up two mic cues tonight. So believe me, it's going to happen. In fact, if this thing was out when we built this whole system, this I would probably would have bought this. Be. This is probably what we would have got. Um, because I don't have a physical surface here to control it. It's a screen. It, it's not as easy. Um, so this is having a physical control surface is really nice. So um, bottom line is, does it sound good? And is it reliable? You're going to test it and find out. Time's going to tell. We're going to do... Um, at least one pro audio suite on it, so just stay tuned over at Pro Audio Suite uh, on Facebook and see if you uh, catch us over there and see what you think of the product based on what we think. Cool. Anyways, uh, <laughs> what else is going on? I think we do have at least one question coming in here. This yep. one from Gary Lewis Gary and the Playboys. Lewis. All right, Gary. Um, this one's about Audacity. And by the way, I did play around with Audacity three. It's two point. 3.1, mm -hmm. I believe, God, is a lot the of features in it. It's and really cool. Yeah, there, it's 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 something that's coming in its own. I, I, the, it's becoming, it's just getting better and better. Um, on Audacity, I am getting clicks or snaps, rarely, but it's still a pain. Yeah, anytime you have any click or a break in your audio, it's mm -hmm. a pain. Um, it's almost impossible to edit it out. Any ideas? In Audacity? In Audacity. Um, There's a couple of ways you can do it in Audacity. I mean, they have a click remover. There is a click filter in it. Not one of my favorite tools. Yeah. Uh, the best way, if, if it's in the middle of a word, you're screwed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, and if it's doing it, my philosophy is fix the problem. We need to figure out what's going what, on. Why is that happening? Yeah. Not how do you clean it up afterwards? Yeah. Because if you can fix the problem, then you're going to save a heck of a lot of time going yeah. back and taking like one. Of the, yeah. Usually a click like that is indicative of a dropout. It's a digital drop. It's a break in the stream of audio right. from your interface to the computer and it, at and some it, point. And if you're looking at the waveform and you zoom in, it's represented by a peak, a straight line down, and then starting back up and you know and that sort of thing. And it's like, it sounds oh. like a click usually. It's usually a missed sample. Yeah. And, and it goes snap, mm -hmm. and it'll show up as a white line in a uh, you know in a, in a spectrograph where you can really see it. And if you're really unlucky, it happens in like huge chunks, and it sounds like static. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. In which case you've got a loose cable or something along those lines. Uh, but uh, you know. The thing is, is when you when when somebody asks a question like that, it always helps to hear it. To hear you know, it. How many times do we see this a question that gets asked in a forum? Yeah. It's like I'm getting this I'm getting this hum, and then they send you the audio, and it's like, no, it's not a hum. It's it's a steady mechanical sound, right. or it's the air conditioner, or it's something else that's going on. And people, everybody perceives things very yeah. differently. So we're the guys that need to actually hear it because usually in a yeah. second or two, we're like, oh, it's or, that. Yeah, we'll hear it and load it into an editor like Twisted Wave and look at the waveform and see what it's doing. Also, what software uh, version you're on. What OS, are you on Mac or Windows? What version? Um, what audio interface you're using? You know, on and on. There's a lot of details we, we'd need to know. Um, I can say this, like, Something that's basically eliminated those problems from my recording life almost 100% without fail is no longer having any hard drives in the recording chain anymore. 
everything is solid state. Um, the internal can drive on a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or all, all the new Macs from the last three or four years, MacBooks anyway. No more spinning hard drives. Um, you know, when you have a spinning hard drive, that there's a little head in there. So there's a thing spinning this way, a head going this way. And sometimes that head has to move from here to here to write the audio. And if your buffer settings are wrong, that's another thing to check. Um, if your buffer settings are too low, that means it's not storing enough audio in memory and the hard drive can't get to the next place to write data and you get a certain kind of dropout. I don't know if that's the problem he's having, but definitely start by making sure you've eliminated that from the system. You, you, nowadays, uh, SSD drives are very affordable. Yep. You don't need a humongous one terabyte SSD. You just need something large enough to keep all your working projects. I call it a scratch drive. It's the place where everything goes that you're working on. And then when you're done, move it somewhere else. Move it to a big, cheap four terabyte hard drive for, you know, safekeeping. Yeah. Or one, of, one of those, those portable uh, flash drives. It's got yeah. 200, you know, it's got a terabyte on it. You yeah, I mean, well, I, I showed you guys the portable flash drive I have. is a SanDisk. SanDisk. SanDisk right? called yeah. the Extreme. It's so fast now, it's now where I keep my iMovie projects. Hmm. I'm using I, iMovie a lot more these days. And with iMovie, they don't make it obvious, but you can move your... Actually, you can do this with pretty much all the Apple apps. Uh, uh, photos um itunes and imovie you can move that project to another drive so i moved the imovie file which gets huge basically every time you start a project every single element ends up in your imovie project so i moved it to the extreme ssd 100 i think it was 80 dollars for half a terabyte and uh flawless never skips a beat works beautifully so i just have to remember before i launch imovie plug this thing in and I'm off to the races. So cool. it's worked out really well. Okay, we've got um, a question from okay, David yeah, Davis. And by the way, Gary, um, put a comment in the, yeah. in the YouTube. Let us know that the advice we gave you helped, or if not, put more details, and maybe one of us can follow up or somebody else will chime in. Um, David Davis, this one just popped in. I use a 2i2 in my booth, um, but most of my editing is outside the booth, which is nice to be able to, That's the way I do it. if you've got two rooms, it's nice to not be stuck in the booth all day. Um, what would be the best way to control the volume to my monitor, studio monitors at the editing station? So the two I twos in the booth, mm -hmm. his speakers are outside the booth. They're probably plugged into the two I two. Right. So he's got wires going from one room to the other. Um, my guess would be an external mixer. Um, monitor out on the 2i2 to a mixer and then out to the monitors, yay or nay. That seems to be a little it's, bit uh, a kludged little together, as you might say. But. I mean, the mixer is not necessary. You can get... He's got a 2i2. He's yeah. got a 2i2. It's just physically in the wrong place. Right. You know, he has it in the booth because he wants to probably be able to adjust, adjust his, his mic volume. gain, right? Right. But you can get uh, a monitor volume knob. Like literally a box that has one job. Well, and there's that's there's all one there's one on there's the big silver one on the two i two. Right, but that's in the booth. Right, and he's at an editing station outside the booth. Oh, okay. Right? So how does he control? So there's, there's two ways I can think of. One is to get a monitor volume knob. Mm -hmm. Yes, they they do exist. Um, under a hundred dollars, probably you know a good one's going to cost almost as much as the Scarlet, but a good volume knob is going to be expensive because they want to make sure it doesn't screw with the audio it's got to be passive right no no power plug anything it should just be a clean volume control that goes between the scarlet and your speakers that's one way right. another way would be to have speakers that have their own volume knob on them right um a bunch of them have like a volume knob on one speaker mm -hmm. um but the better quality ones don't have that generally so well, well i'd say my yamaha h5s here have a volume control on, on the back. each on each yeah but so, they're on the back right right so that's a little less convenient but so and then another way that i've done it for other people is oftentimes the computer is outside the booth so i just plug the speakers right into the headphone jack of the computer and then right. set the playback to that right yeah if it works great yeah. sometimes maybe it's not the cleanest sounding but it right. can solve that problem yeah. i've i've always taken the philosophy of having the interface at my desk mm -hmm. and so i set my levels and forget it and most of the times when i'm working with volume issues 
one, I know what I'm going to be reading. Like this morning I was, uh, I was working at my desk and I knew in order to be do a, like an announcer voice for a soccer thing, turn the volume way down and, and record in my booth where my two I two is not, you use mic technique because I know if I get close to a mic, I'm going to get more proximity effect. But if I need to shout and we don't want to over modulate, you back off and turn away because we don't shout into people's ears unless we're really pissed at them. Yeah. You know. And that, that works. I mean, if you have a well-tuned room, that works great. Yeah. If you have a lousy tuned room, it, it, mm. it starts to sound real boothy real fast. Right. Um, he says he has KRK Rocket 5s, which of course do have a volume control in the back. Yeah, they do. They yeah. do. Um, yeah, another thing in terms of Dan, like says it's two I2s outside, experience. Right. Like you're going to see a script you go, oh, it's that. Read. Right. And you're going to go over your 2i2 and you're going to set the gain. And you're going to walk into the yeah. booth. This I believe is, and set it and forget it. You're, you're going to learn where the gain should be for the majority of the styles of reads that you do within a couple of weeks to a couple months. And you're going to just have it. You're going to know exactly. Just boop, walk in. You're probably not going to muck with it too much. you know. Um, but that, yeah, experience will be your friend there. You'll just know. You know. Sometimes I'll have like two settings I literally will mark. I'll get a little wax pencil and for somebody and say, Here's your video game and animation read, and here's your conversational read. Give them a little bit of headroom. Yes. Yeah. So here and then nowadays for the millennials, here is your ASMR setting for when you're doing ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. Or your automobile read. <laughs> How many of you guys have to do ASMR stuff? Have you? Do you know what that is? Have I've, you done I've it? I've heard of it. I can't remember exactly what it is. Go on YouTube and Google ASMR IKEA. They did an entire 25 something minute long commercial online in ASMR. I, I'm just, stands for I, I'm not going to even explain it. Just, I'm telling you, just watch it so you can under, it is the weirdest thing. It stands for autonomic sensory meridian response. Good night, I everybody. Think, <laughs> I, I think that's it. But basically it's things that give people a chill. That yep. you know makes them feel all shivery. Mm. They've, there's a lot of people that for them it's whispering, mm. or it's it's the clinking of fingernails it's on an things. Auditory kinesthetic or it's sort of thing. eating with yeah. your mouth open. I mean, there are videos where people eat with their mouth open. It's the internet is a weird place. Um, anyway, if anybody's doing ASMR, let us know. Well, let's go. You go. Well, that's um, a, like that's more tech than I think that most people can handle in a week. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. a lot of information and we really appreciate it. We got through you. the questions. We so. got through the questions. We've talked about all sorts of stuff and we love getting your questions. If you've got a, a, a home studio question for us, mm -hmm. you can write to us anytime at the guys at vobs.tv. Mm -hmm. Real simple. And, you know, we check our email every now and again, like at least every other week. <laughs> uh, and well, we uh, talk about that on the show. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that if you want to have your question on the show, write to us there and we'll make sure that you get on here on Tech Talk. And of course, if uh, you know, we know a guest that's coming on, you know, you can write that question as well because our guests are well known. And you, you're going to know what they're going to, you, you know what you're going to want to ask them. Yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. so that's Tech Talk for this week. And uh, we'll be right back after some of these messages and we'll wrap it all up into a nice tight little ball. Be right back. This is Bill Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com.
What question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's, how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take vo to go gos free Getting Started in VO class. You heard right, it's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the class you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, and the business skills you need. All in one single comprehensive online class taught by vo to go David H. Lawrence the 17th. This class won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Go to gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. <clears throat> Hi, this is Kat Cressida, and this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Okay, we're back to say goodbye. But don't go yet because there's still stuff we got to tell you that's really important. For example, in two weeks, our guest is going to be Eric Shepard. Oh, baby. Who happens to be my agent. A man with an opinion. Yes. Uh, he definitely got some opinions. Uh, it's he, good night to ask an agent. Yes. Anything. Yes. And how appropriate that it's on April Fool's Day. <laughs> so well, that'll, that'll be fun to have Eric here. Uh, Fool an agent. Yes. Here on the show. <laughs> Stump the agent. <laughs> it's like a daily thing anyway. Uh, let's see here. Um, we need to thank our donors of the week. And who are they? Well, you've nicely listed them here for me, which is very nice. It only took me six years to figure out how to do that. Appreciate that. Um, we've got Philip Sapir, uh, Michelle Blanker, Antland Productions, that's Uncle Roy, uh, Gary Bongartz, Andrew Kaufman, and Christy Burns. So some of the names, and these are names you've probably heard because I've read them many times because most of these are subscribers. They send uh, money that. on a recurring schedule yeah. using uh, PayPal. And it's very kind that they do that. Thank yeah. you. And we appreciate your support. There's a donate now button right here on our homepage. And uh, we'd love you know, if you can give us some support. It allows us to maintain this magnificent technical feat that we do every other week here to uh, bring you this show. So and I know we mentioned it last time, yep. but did you know that when we had that amazing studio to use in Portland, that incredible space, that was because of Karen O'Brien. Yes. So that thanks, was a, Karen. We a major you. contribution to the show. We really appreciated that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, we need to see your booths. Now, this is a picture you took. It is. This is the Super, Super Bloom. Bloom. This is the band, <laughs> the park that's been banned. You cannot go there now because it, it became they, so popular. This is Lake Elsinore. Lake, yeah. uh, near Lake Elsinore. It's called uh, Walker Canyon. This became so popular, you now can't even go visit it. So you have to look at this picture on our on our show to see what it looks like but this is the super bloom uh i saw it on thursday last week um the super bloom is in california is this massive blooming of poppies and some other what are the purple ones called lupin lupin lupon yeah they uh just go for miles it's kind of mind-boggling but if you want to see them you just kind of travel north as they go north so do you. You can go see them in other parts of the state. So it's like the Wizard beautiful. of Oz. They're going through the field of poppies. Going, yes. 
Something with poison. I believe it is Instagram that ruined this place because <laughs> that's where my girlfriend heard about it. And I think many others did as well. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, it became so crowded they had to close it down. But please, we want your booths. It's more fun to see your space. So send them in to the guys at VOBS.TV. Absolutely. Uh, put booth in the subject and we'll throw it on the wall. Make sure it's in landscape format, not Instagram story format. Not vertical, please. Yeah. But my phone doesn't work like that. Try turning it. <laughs> Just it's, twist it. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. simple thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, we're live here every other week now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do the whole show, and then we split it up so you guys can, don't have to digest an, you know, an hour and a half of stuff. You get 45 minutes of a great interview, and you get 45 minutes of more tech than you can possibly handle in 45 minutes. <laughs> Uh, for your home voiceover studio. So make sure you join us for that. And if you want to be in the audience, uh, all you got to do is write to us again at theguys at VOBS.TV. Make sure that you're, you know, what week you're coming because we're now in alternate weeks. Yes. We'll be back on again April 1st and then April 8th and 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15th. 15th, thank you. Uh, so <laughs> math has never been one of my, my fortes. Maths. Math. <laughs> Um, and, uh, again, you got a question, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. Let's thank our amazing sponsors like, uh, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra, uh, source elements, VO to go, go voice actor websites.com and J Michael Collins demos. All right. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard foundation for the betterment of webcasting. Uh, also our producer, Catherine Curridan, who got us mad in here, uh, this week, which was great. Um, uh, Mike Merlino for his ace work in the chat room tonight. Yeah, thanks Mike. We like having him around, yeah. we like having his mom around too, because Sue Merlino is our technical director and she does a bang up job of that every week. Mm-hmm. I think we got her worked in just right. <laughs> Please don't leave us. That's right. Uh, and of course we'd like to thank Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Voice Over Body Shop. You know, it's not an easy business. We're here to help you with your home voiceover studio because when it sounds right, it is good. Something like that. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>